Hello friends, I am Professor Dilip Sase and I would like to welcome you in the second lecture of the text The Cop and the Anthem by O. Henry. So far we have seen that the first attempt made by Sophie to get arrested and to go to jail had been rendered unsuccessful by the head, head waiter because he denied him admission in the restaurant. Uh, it's interesting to see what happens next. So let's go. At a corner of 6th Avenue, electric lights and cunningly displayed wares behind plate glass made a shop window attractive. Sophie took a stone and dashed it through the glass. People came running around the corner, a policeman in the lead. Sophie stood still with his hands in his pockets and smiled at the sight of brass buttons. So there was a shop and, uh, at the 6th Avenue corner and there were some goods displayed in the window of that shop. And those goods were so cunningly, cunningly means cleverly displayed uh, in order to attract customers. To add to the beauty of the window, there were some electric lights and that heightened the beauty of the shop. Sophie thought for a while, took a stone and dashed it into the glass. And uh, that glass was cracked into pieces. Hearing that commotion, people as well as a policeman ran to the site. Where is the man that done that? inquired the officer agitatedly. Agitatedly. Agitatedly means in a troubled or nervous manner. So the policeman asked in a nervous manner, who is the, where is the criminal? Don't you think that I have had something to do with it? said Sophie with a friendly voice as one greets good fortune. So when the policeman asked where that man was, Sophie told the policeman that he himself had broken the glass and that is also in a very friendly manner smiling at him. The policeman refused to accept Sophie even as a clue. Men who smash windows do not remain to chat with the police. They take to their heels. The policeman saw a man halfway down the block running to catch a car. With drawn club, he joined in the pursuit. Sophie, with disgust in his heart, drifted along twice unsuccessful. But when Sophie told the policeman that he had broken the window, the policeman refused to accept him as a criminal and at the same time, the policeman noticed a man running to catch a car. Actually, uh, the policeman only saw the man running, but the man was actually running to catch a car and policeman thought that he was the man who had broken the window with drawn club. Now club is not an ordinary club uh, which we uh, think. Uh, generally we have the meaning of club uh, uh, where people go uh, to play cards, sit, chat and uh, drink and have chit chat. It's not a, uh, like that sort of club. It's a um, stick uh, generally used by policemen. Uh, it, it, it is around 2 to 3 feet and it is made of cane with drawn club. Drawn that is he draws it in order to beat that fellow. Sophie now disgust in his heart. Now hatred. Sophie feels hatred because second time uh, he had fed. On the opposite side of the street there was a restaurant with no great credentials. On the opposite side of the road there was a restaurant and it was it had no great pretension. Pretensions means titles of display. So it was a very average restaurant. It catered to large appetites. Appetite? Bellies. It catered to large appetite means it provided food to number of people. And modest purses. Modest purses means people who are poor, who cannot afford paying much for their food. So you know, we can say that it was a very uh, lower class restaurant and it provided food to number of people. Its crockery and atmosphere were thick. Its crockery, even its crockery was thick. Generally, we, uh, whenever we visit marketplace, we see that the, the smaller and thinner the crockery is, it's costly. And the thicker the crockery is, it is cheap. Its soup and napery thin. Napery is a kind of cloth that is put on dining table. So the napery also was thin. That cloth also was thin. That told uh, that tells us about the uh, economical condition of the uh, restaurant that it provided food to lower class people only. Into this place Sophie betook himself. Betook means to take place, to go inside without any challenge. So he was not restricted uh, uh, just uh, as he was restricted by the head waiter in the first restaurant. 
at a table he sat and consumed beef steak beef steak is a kind of uh, non veg food item then flapjacks flapjack is a sweet tray baked oat bar donuts donuts is a kind of cake and pie pie that no and he has all these food items consumes all this food and then he told the waiter the fact that the minutest coin and himself were to a total stranger that means he told the head waiter that he doesn't have money at all to pay the bill now get with me and call a cop said sophie and don't keep a gentleman waiting then sophie ordered the or tells frankly the head waiter that mm, do get busy means call the police and don't keep me waiting here mm, hand over me to the policeman no cop for you said the waiter with a voice like butter cakes and and i like the cherry in the manhattan cocktail hey con which means that the head waiter in a plain or soft without any sort of anger in his voice he called his companion his name was con neatly upon his left ear on the callous pomp payment two waiters speeched sophie and what did they do together they lifted sophie and threw him callous callous means very hard and payment put back two waiters pitched threw sophie out of the restaurant he arose arose is a past participle of arise arise means to get up joint by joint joint by joint means slowly he stood up slowly as a carpenter's rule opens so he rose like a carpenter's rule here you can see an example of simile because rising of sopi has been compared with uh, opening of the carpenter's rule and dusted he uh, dusted his clothes because he had been thrown out uh, on the pavement arrest seem now but an elusive dream elusive means difficult to achieve very tough to achieve this island seem very far away going to jail uh, seem to be very hard for sopi a policeman who stood before a drug store two doors away laughed and walked down the street there was a policeman standing two doors away and he laughed he he laughed because he saw the predicament of sophie uh, which had been uh, sophie had been thrown away uh, thrown out of the restaurant and that seeing that predicament the policeman laughed and he walked away so for the third time sophie uh, sophie's love doesn't favor it doesn't favor him so he was seized with a sudden fear that some dreadful enchantment enchantment means magic had rendered him immune to arrest now the feeling overtakes his mind that there is some black magic and that black magic is restricting him from get, getting arrested he was in a state of panic now he was panicked and when he came up uh, came upon another policeman longing grandly longing means sitting in a relaxed mood so there was one more policeman he comes across he he, he uh, meets another policeman and that policeman was sitting in a relaxed manner in front of a glittering theater he caught at the immediate straw of disorderly conduct now sophi thinks of immediate disorderly disorderly means uh, unnatural or you may say nonsense conduct on the sidewalk sophi began to el drunken gibberish on the sidewalk so sophi started to el el means shout loudly a drunken drunken the person who has taken drink gibberish gibberish means uh, gibberish is some sort of nonsense talk so he started uh, shouting loudly he danced howled raved and otherwise disturbed the skies so he did whatever he could to disturb the atmosphere the policeman merely twirled his club the policeman what did the policeman do he simply twirled his club that is the action of twirling he has that club club means that stick uh, those uh, generally policemen how they uh, how in their hands he started twirling his club and told a citizen who was sitting or standing nearby the police it is one of them lr celebrating the goose egg they give to the hartford college noisy but no harm we have instructions to let them be so the policeman uh, thinks that sophie was one of those el students who gives uh, who give uh, goose eggs now don't go for the literal meaning of goose egg goose is goose is a 
kind of duck and uh, no one can give uh, eggs or goose to professors and the administration of college that would be um, you some you may say that that would be uh, ridiculous actually to give goose egg means to pay heavy amount of money unwillingly so the students of uh, hatford college had to pay lot of amount for their education and that made them unhappy and they expressed their sadness by drinking and shouting loudly so the government had given orders to the police american police not to arrest them okay he admitted that they are sometimes noisy but they are harmless this consulate so he stopped his unraveling unavailing racket this consulate this consulate means very happy now so he became became very unhappy because that was the fourth attempt he had made to get arrested and go to jail now we we all know that he wanted to protect himself from the cold climate and that was the fourth attempt he had made and he stopped his unavailing unavailing means fruitless racket means uproar shouting in a loud voice would never a policeman lay hands on him in his fancy the island seemed an unattainable arcadia arcadia means unique place now in his fancy he thought that he would never go to jail he buttoned his thin coat against the chilling cold in order to protect himself from the chilling cold now he started to button his uh, coat uh, so far we have seen that sophi has made four attempts to get arrested and to go to jail but the fortune did not favor him now it would be interesting to see what happens next but we will see that in our next lecture and it's interesting to see what happens next thank you